Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jay Nelsonis, and if you are new, welcome. Um, as many of you know, or as many of you who are subscribed to my channel are XJWs, I am also soon to be an XJW after this week. Yeah, after this week when I get this fellowship. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I know I've been gone for a while, kind of like weird. I've been gone for a minute. You know, a lot has changed my life. And I'll share that with you. Um, but I just wanted to talk about, all right, I know this is a pretty old video. But I saw it. Sorry, I can't breathe. I saw it on YouTube. And it was that Dr. Phil video. Now, I know a lot of you guys saw it. But this is going to be my first time seeing it. As soon as I saw it pop up on my um my feed, I said, oh, I got to watch this with you guys. I got to watch this with you guys. Now, before, let's get to the video. I'm going to play it on my laptop here. I'm going to mute it as I watch it so I can put it on the screen, scream, the screen and make it bigger so you guys can watch it. Just, just know that things will not be a completely accurate as my reactions because I can't edit it perfectly to where I react to everything right when things happen. So please bear with me. Okay, let's watch this video. After CPS took our children, the elders never spoke up to help us in any way. I think it's because shortly after CPS got involved, I left the Jehovah's Witnesses. When I told the elders that I didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore, they told me that Satan had blinded my eyes. Robert chose to stay within the organization, so our daughter and him are both still in the good graces of the organization. But no one speaks to my son or I because we're disassociated. Like all Jehovah's Witnesses, Robert prays for the end of the system to come. And when that day comes, all apostate thinkers like me will be annihilated. So basically, Robert's praying for my death. Once my wife left our faith, it became more isolated. I respect her decision. I try not to be involved that much. We spend less time together. Jehovah's Witnesses don't permit divorce except for on the grounds of adultery, physical abuse, or spiritual Hold endangerment. Hold on, I had to pause it. Um, she said that um, Jehovah's Witnesses don't allow people to get divorced on the grounds of adultery, physical abuse, or I forgot what else, what else she said, but I remember at, um, at one, um, you know, like at the circuit assembly, I remember one, one sister gave an experience that, um, her husband was abusive to her, like extremely abusive. Like he would beat her. He would cheat on her. All this. No, no. Yeah. He would be, be on her. She came to know that he was cheating on her. She told the elders, but the elders told her that she had to stick with her husband until they had proof that her husband was cheating on her. So she endured this abusive relationship um, just like years later for her husband to like get a phone call from like the girl he's cheating on her with for, for evidence for her to get a divorce. But the sister was forced to stay with that brother for years as he abused her. Just, you know what I mean? Because the brothers felt that she was honoring her, her, what is it? Her commitment to Jehovah and her husband or something like that. But it was just like, they tried to glorify at that assembly saying that this sister was strong and, you know, this sister is a great example of loyalty and this sister was a great example of um, trusting in Jehovah. Yeah, that's what it was. She was a great example of trusting in Jehovah because she didn't leave her husband when he was abusing her until she had evidence that he was cheating. So that's just messed up, but that's just, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now let's continue. And as an apostate, having left the organization, I'm um, a spiritual endangerment to my husband. I definitely have plans to stay in my faith. I love Robert. I don't want Robert to leave me. Okay, now before we go on, I, I said I had a, what I think is a pivotal question for you. The church, has basically shunned your wife now because of her position and you're labeled an apostate. Um, you say it's the same thing about your son because he's not the biological father. Correct, yeah. Um, 
and you may waffle on the words about this, but you went to the elders and had a discussion. You claim they picked up the phone and called CPS and turned you in with an allegation of molestation based on a misunderstanding. And when that was all fully explained, you claim they have refused to step up on your behalf and intervene, correct? Yes. I've always had the attitude, if I go somewhere and my wife and family aren't welcome, then I'm not welcome. And if somebody tells me that I am to shun my wife and children, they can kiss my ass. And I don't care. I don't care if it's a I don't care if it's a church or the government or a school or whoever it is because I don't believe what label or brand you put on a religion. No God that I know, which is a loving God, is going to ask me as a man to turn my back on my wife and my children. <laughs> and that's got nothing to do, that's got nothing to do with religion. That's got to do with being a man. And I, I just don't understand how you can go to these people and as you claim, they can turn you into CPS, get your children taken away from you, shun your wife, get your children removed, refuse to intervene on your behalf, and then you just follow along and say, well, what do you want me to do now? Wow. Wow, that's powerful. How many people watch this? Well, not a lot of views. That's crazy, because he's right. Like, what loving God would want you to shun your family, shun your wife and kids, and accept that? Like, that's crazy. And if you think about it, like, mm, that was us. That was once us at some point, Jehovah's Witnesses or XJWs or ex-cult survivors, whoever you are. Like, we all once did that. And I know for a fact that I... I turned my back on my family when I became a Jehovah's Witness. I turned my back on my family. I didn't trust a word that my mother said. I didn't trust anything that she said because I didn't feel that she had my best interest at heart. Like, I would I would skip pay, um, spending time with my family to go out in service. I, would, I, would, um, I wouldn't talk to my family. I would treat them like they were basically nothing or no one. If they, if they didn't want to talk about Jehovah, I didn't talk to my family, especially my immediate family. Well, in my household, in my house, like, things were already rough and hard. And so, you know what I mean? Things were already bad. So I thought, I just figured, like, stay away from them because I felt my family was very toxic, in which they were. It was a very toxic situation to be in as a child, as a, a teenager. But I just remember how much I did turn my back on my mother and my family and, you know... um, spending time with them, getting to know them, um, enjoying t family time or just laughing with my family. The only time I would ever talk to my family is that if it was regarding Jehovah. And if it wasn't, I didn't have close relationships with my sister. I relied so much on the organization to provide me with all these close relationships because I disowned my family. <laughs> I disowned my family. I was like, I don't need my mother. I, can, I have so many other mothers in the con congregation. And when I think back at that now, and I'm just like, wow. And when that's all said and done, and I'm I'm not in the religion anymore, I was alone because the people that I relied so much on in the religion, they turned their backs on me. They turned their backs on me because their love for me was conditional. Their love for me was based on me being in the religion and not loving me for who I was. And it hurts me now because I spent so much time and a devotion to this organization, to these people, just for them to turn their backs on me. And the people that are picking me up and are trying to understand me and trying to be there for me are the ones that I turn my back on. And I know my it's really hard, like relationships, relationships are hard for me right now with my family because, you know, I've, I really, 
I really separated myself from them. And now they're like, oh, you need our help now? You know, you know what I mean? And even now, because um, I'm just getting close to my mother after all these years, um, she came to visit not too long ago. And, you know, I really got to see who my mother really was beside, you know, despite all the stuff that we've been through when we were kids and all the stuff that I endured when I was in the religion, I got to see and spend time with my mother. And it made me cry because... I never loved her this much. I never missed her this much. I never felt that I was cl as close to her as I wanted to be or as I felt we could have been if she became one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was just like, the whole time I had my mother's love, the whole time I had my family, as family's affection, but I was pushing them away for a religion, for these people who now, if I asked them for a favor, they would block me. They would turn their back on me. And that's so true with Dr. Phil said, like, we're just supposed to turn all our family away and do all this stuff and devote ourselves to this religion that, you know what I mean, tells us to stop talking to our family, to to cancel out family members who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses and to just be okay with that. And it's not okay. And, you know, I've I've learned so much these these past three three years that two to three years that family, good or bad, be it what may, you know, what's left you know, the family that's helping me, I really appreciate it. You know, I really don't know what I would do be without the family that I have that I turn my back on. So, wow, that's a very, it almost made me cry because I know a lot of you guys have also done the same thing. You've turned your back on your, your children or your, your parents or, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll get new parents in the new system. And it's just a reminder to that our family that are here now, like, Hey guys, um, I'm just gonna add this in, and I want to quickly say that, um, sorry for my headphones, that those who have family in the organization, whose families, you know, you were raised in the truth, you were raised, I'm sorry, you, there's stuff in the background, you were raised in the truth, all your families in the truth, just know that you have me, you have so many people in the XJW community, who is your family now, since your family isn't aware of what they're doing, and, and that's another thing, like, don't, take it out on your family that are that are in the organization because they're brainwashed you know what I mean be patient with them be loving with them because they don't know any better so if your family <clears throat> if your family is still in the organization and you're the only one out and you feel alone you're not alone and just know that give your family time give your family um you know respect them show them respect give your family the benefit of the doubt that they're not you know, going to be brainwashed by this cult forever. So that's just what I wanted to add in there. Love you guys. That was, that's pretty much what I learned, you know, of not being in the religion and what I've gained from learning about my family. And I just, I love my family more because they're real. You know, my family's not perfect. My family is far from doing everything right. And so am I. And I really appreciate my family for accepting me and loving me despite and especially my mother because she saw me she saw me become one of Jehovah's Witnesses she talked to me about it and she she accepted whatever decision I wanted she accepted the fact that I want to be a Jehovah's Witness because she studied when she was younger she 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 respected the fact that I want to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses she could have told me that not to study or that this religion was this and that she let me go and experience this on my own and now that I'm not in it she still accepts me and loves me for who I am you know her love for me is unconditional unlike the mothers that I thought that I had in the religion who only text me okay go to the memorial so just a reminder guys don't forget about your family who are in this world and just know that their love is unconditional so that's pretty much it, guys. I missed you. Ugh, it's been a minute. It's been crazy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think about the whole family thing and being, excommunicating your family or what is that word? Shunning or shunning your family because they're not in the truth. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what your experiences were in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Hope you guys have peace. I hope you guys are healing. I send you so much positive energy through the screen. 
And yeah, thanks guys for watching. Bye.